Welcome to part three of Sunday School Boosters, and we're going to start part three with, we're just going to jump into ideas. And so let's talk about a parachute party. Now, parachute party, um, it's easy to find parachutes that you can use in recreation games. And without us going through a bunch of games, you can get online, Google parachute games. There are all sorts of fun games that you can use with parachutes. And around a parachute, it's very easy to fit uh, 15, 20, sometimes even 30 kids. And at the end, I love to get the kids under the parachute, have them make big waves over the kids, little waves, fast waves, you can make a tent over them, all sorts of things you can do. And uh, and so parachute party, and then talk about, you can even have, uh, you know, uh, do other things. I know in Colombia there was a time where um, they were parachuting Bibles into the jungles of Colombia. And the planes, the missionary planes were being shot at. And so a great story about parachutes that you can tell. You can also tell, tell a story about, you know, in World War II, um, not all the parachutes worked. And uh, that there were, and I don't remember the exact percentage, I want to say it was only about um, 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 parachutes that opened. And so suddenly what they did is they began to have the people packaging the parachutes. They began to let them go up in a plane and jump out and test the parachutes. And suddenly almost 100% of the parachutes worked. Why? Simply because they were more careful. You can talk about accountability. You can talk about helping each other. You can talk about caring about others and not just about yourself. And uh, so lots of things you can do. You can have your kids make egg parachutes, parachutes for eggs, and take them outside, let them parachute their egg, and talk about things that are fragile. Uh, how you can break a person's heart easily, how strong your words are. You know, what does it take to crack this egg? You know, it takes something, it takes an impact, but it's not that hard. Well, some people's lives are fragile too, and it only takes one mean word to really hurt them deep on the inside and just go straight out of James chapter 3. So lots of things you can do with Parachute Day. Um, uh, you can do an Angry Birds Day or tie into a popular video game that is that is not rated something that you wouldn't want your kids playing. I mean, we all have kids in our in our ministries that are playing games that that we would not promote. And but Angry Birds is a game right now that's popular. It's been popular for years. There's Angry Bird T-shirts. There's Angry Bird stuffed animals. So do a theme on on using Angry Birds. Uh, in fact, we've done it the last two years. We've done a part one, part two. Angry Birds, and then we did Angry Birds Returns, and we actually set up on our stage uh, using empty uh, uh, soda cans or sometimes blocks. We set up an Angry Birds, and we buy the little, we've bought the dog toys that are Angry Bird dog toys, the little pigs, and we have our kids get the birds, and they throw the birds or use a slingshot to shoot them across the room, and they're trying to knock down all the pigs, except it's real life. And so we do our own version of Angry Birds. And in the middle of it, we'll play a little bit, and then we'll talk about the three things to make sure to talk about anger. One is, if you're, if you're angry, first thing, you've got to make sure you're angry for the right reason. You know, it's not wrong to be angry. All through the Bible, you see God got angry at sin, at disobedience. Jesus was angry, the people in the temple. And usually that's a story that we refer to because it's the perfect illustration of righteous anger. It's not wrong to be angry, but you've got to be angry for the right reason. So if you're angry because somebody else got something and you didn't, well, you know, you're angry for the wrong reason. You know, that there's an anger that comes out of selfishness. And so to define for your kids what right anger is. So are you angry for the right reason? And then do you have the right response? So say you're angry for the right reason and you get mad and you punch somebody in the nose. Well, that's the wrong response. So the three questions, are you angry for the right reason? Do you have the right response? And then do you take care of it in the right time? In other words, do you take care of it right then? Or do you let it linger? Do you let it grow? Because if you let it grow, it's going to turn into bitterness. It's going to grow into something that's not healthy. You know, the Bible says, uh, be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. In other words, it's okay to be angry, but don't sin in your anger. Take care of it in the right time. Don't let it go on and on and on. And so we talk about those three things, and we spread out over two weeks, those three things, using Bible stories and using verses about anger and about righteous anger and about uh, unhealthy anger as well. 
And in the middle of all of it, we play Angry Birds, and we give away Angry Bird items. You know, Angry Bird t-shirts, Angry Bird hat, Angry Bird backpack, you know, different Angry Bird thing. Not every kid gets something, but it's just a variety. You know, sometimes we'll do it, whoever knocks down the most pigs. You will get to choose whatever they want up here off the stage. And, and so Angry Birds makes for a great theme, even if you're talking about, say, the fruit of the Spirit. Because sometimes when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we talk about the fruit, and we talk about the opposite of those. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is... You know, love. Well, what's the opposite of love? So maybe you spend a week on love and you spend a week on hate. You know, you spend a week on joy and you spend a week on the opposite of joy, mourning. What is the opposite of joy? No such thing as unjoy. Hmm. You see, there's happiness and there's unhappiness. Why? Because happiness has to do with your happenings. It comes from an old English word, hap. It means your happenings. Because you're happy when things happen right. But joy, joy doesn't come from your happenings. Joy can be a constant. You can have joy even in the middle of the worst situations because joy doesn't depend on your circumstances. Joy comes from God. Or when we teach our kids, joy comes from Jesus. Everybody, J, J, O, O, Y, Y. Joy comes from, and the kids go, Jesus. Joy comes from Jesus. And talk about joy. Talk about the opposite of it. And so, uh, you know, there's things you can do with fruit. You know, the fruit of the Spirit as well. You can do Cotton Candy Day. Kids come to church and every kid gets cotton candy and talk about how things don't last. You can do Sword Day. Make it a Bible Day. Give a Bible to all the new kids in your ministry, all your kindergartners or first grader. You know, it's first grade Bible day and every kid gets a Bible, you know, and every, all the other kids celebrate with them. They've got a Bible. Talk about the importance of the Bible, how to read the Bible, reading the Bible with your mom and dad, how to memorize the Bible. And then at the end, talk about how the Bible is your sword. Pull out a sword. Kids love seeing swords. I tell you, it's so fun to stand in front of a group of kids and pull out a two-edged sword and talk to them about how powerful God's word is and then send them home all with a balloon sword. You can call it, you know, Bible day or you can call it sword day. I mean, lots of things you can call it. You can do bubblegum blast where you have bubblegum competitions. Who can chew it up and blow the bubble the fastest? Who can blow the biggest bubble? Who can blow the biggest bubble without it popping and getting on your face? And each one of these tiny illustrations, you know, things in life don't last. You know, when you're working toward a goal, in the middle of them chewing, trying to blow the bubble, they didn't get distracted. They didn't go eat a hot dog. You know, they stayed focused. Well, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will, will come in. And so, so talk to them. Use it as an illustration. You know, they blew the bubble, but ah, it got on their face. You know, they took a chance. Hey, guys, you take a chance anytime you go somewhere. Like, say you're going to a friend's house, and you know that friend, they are allowed to do things that you're not. Well, you're taking a chance. And if you're at your friend's house, and they're starting to watch a movie, and you know you're not supposed to see that movie, what should you do? Help your kids answer these questions. Part of them understanding how the Bible fits in their life is you give them the specific situations to stand in before they actually get in those situations. You know, what's going to happen when you go to the movies? Your mom drops you off and you're going in and, ah, you've told your mom you're going to see this movie because that's what your friend said. But then you get there and they're like, hey, let's go to this movie instead. And you know it's not a movie your mom or dad wants to, you to watch. What are you going to do? How do you show them how God's truth in that moment becomes their powerful weapon to overcome a bad situation, how they can obey every day. And so uh, another one you could do is bring your own banana and then just do all sorts of banana games. Did you know you can shoot a banana using a pair of pantyhose? Yeah, have some target practice. You can cut a banana in half and nobody will know it's cut because you take a paper clip and you stick it in. I mean, open up a paper clip, stick in that little line, that the one edge, and it, wiggle it around. And then have a kid open a banana. He'll open it to a banana that's cut in half. And even with that, you can talk about you know, how God, this banana, it was created to be one banana. But now, look, it's separated. And we were created to be in a relationship with God. Hold up one half of the banana. You know, God's perfect. The other half, hold them up apart from each other. We're not perfect. And our sin separates us from God. You know, and even people that may look saved, hey, this banana looked whole on the outside, but it wasn't. When you got to the inside, you realized it wasn't the way it was supposed to be. And there are people in your lives, and they may look saved, but don't count on anybody being saved unless you've heard their salvation story. Don't just assume that someone's saved because they're good. 
because maybe they look good on the outside, but on the inside, they're separated from God. And so bring your own banana day and do all sorts. Maybe have banana splits on that day or uh, all sorts of fun things you can do. But peanut butter and banana sandwiches, of course, don't use peanut butter. You'd want to use wow butter or, you know, a butter that kids aren't allergic to. There's so many peanut allergies these days. Do bubble day. Give every kid that comes one of the little wedding containers where you blow bubbles and let them go home. Let them take it home and tell them every time you see this bubble pop, um, just think about how short life is and how, about how God has great plans for you and talk to them about the plans God has for their life, about how God wants them to live for Jesus. Take a look at a Bible character who lived for Jesus, maybe a Bible character who didn't. One that lived for God, one that didn't. Hey, what did this person do right? What did this person do wrong? Life is short. Make the most of every moment or make the most of every opportunity to share Jesus with others. Don't waste a moment of telling other people about Jesus. There's an illusion too that you can get called Bible bubble or gospel bubbles where you blow bubbles and you reach up and with sleight of hand you bring down this this bubble and it looks like a bubble at first but it's like a big marble and and you show them hey you know this one is hard it's firm it's solid and you can talk about you know bubbles are blown here and there the wind they blow them they pop them they're fragile God doesn't want you to be fragile he doesn't want you to be blown about by this opinion or that opinion or you hear someone that believes something different and, and you're like well maybe they're right God doesn't want you to be pushed around in what you believe God wants you to be solid God wants you to be firm, you know, and then take take a ping pong ball, set it on a table, have kids blow it, how far they can blow it or how straight they can blow it, blow it toward a target, and then call a kid up and instead of the ping pong ball, set down a rock. Have him blow the rock. Try to blow it off. Bring up two, three, five, ten kids. Blow the rock off the table. Well, they can't do it. Why? Because it's firm. It's solid. It's not going to be pushed around by your breath, by that wind. Well, the Bible says not to be pushed around by every wind of doctrine. You know, God doesn't want us to be tossed to and fro, or like what James says, you know, God doesn't want us to waver. James chapter 1. It, God wants us to not be double-minded. God wants us to be firm in our faith, solid. And uh, so uh, a real fun day there with the bubble day. You can do, and I've never done this when I've heard of it, it's, it's barf day. Uh, BARF standing for bring a real friend and so do it if you want to if that's up your alley um, there's a song that we do sing where you put your hands on your stomach and oh it's like you're sick and and it goes I think I'm gonna throw up no oh, and have your kids like hold their head oh like a fever I think I'm gonna throw up oh I think I'm gonna throw up oh my hands and praise the Lord throw up Throw up, throw up, yeah, and you're throwing up your hands every time you say throw up. And because what you're doing, it's not talking about being sick. It's talking about throwing up your hands, praising God, and you got to teach that to your kids just to make sure that they get it. And so you go, throw up, and you're throwing up your hands, throw up, and you're, they're throwing up their hands. Come on, everybody, throw up, yeah, throw up, throw up, hey, throw up your hands and praise the Lord. And so that's something that would fit on a day like that as well. You can do fabulous friend month. You can do dad and daughter day. You could do dad and daughter donut day where dads bring their daughters to a certain room and they all have donuts before um, before they uh, they go to Sunday school. Pray for America Day. Great to do around 4th of July. Just a day. Maybe give the kids a wrist bracelet or have them make a bracelet that says pray for America or pray for the USA and uh, and talk to them about our country and about uh, and about what it means to be a Christian in America today. Uh, you can have light the way day, maybe give away flashlights, turn out the lights, do things with shadows, flashlights, light, you know, um, even some blindfold games, monster mash, with balloon animals, you can make balloon monsters. Um, uh, there's all sorts, especially around Halloween time. Now, you don't want to bring scary stuff in, but uh, you can talk to them about monsters in their life, obstacles they face, fear and uh, and jealousy and greed and selfishness. And so you can have monster mash and maybe even have things that they come in step on. You know, design a, a styrofoam cup as a monster. And then literally, you know, the object of the game is to smash everybody else's monster, you know, to step on it. Or maybe you have kids smash their own monster. And maybe that monster represents an obstacle that they're facing, a problem, a situation they're dealing with in their life. And you talk to them about how they can deal with that, about praying for it, about walking with God, about, you know, have kids maybe bring up their monsters. And, uh, you know, if they're honest, hey, here's something I'm dealing with. And then 
you, you don't know what they're going to bring up, but you bring out scripture to help them. Or maybe they write it on cards. It's anonymous. You know, what are you dealing with? Well, I'm dealing with, you know, my brother and sister, they pick on me and I get mad. I hate them, you know, and so forth. And so you bring up that card, you read it. Hey, here's somebody's monster. And then you take a cup and you design that monster. Have somebody smash it and talk to them about, you know, give them scripture verses to help them and what they can do advice in that specific situation. You do all sports day. Maybe end it with a picnic and fun family game, games. But you come and they do, you know, maybe balloon volleyball and, and maybe balloon basketball. And it wouldn't have to be balloon. It could be all sorts of things. But you pull from sports. Maybe kids, kids wear their favorite sports jersey or their own sports jersey or, you know, call it spirit day. And maybe they dress in the color of their favorite team. And maybe on that day you talk about, you know, how there are they're certain colors that represent the gospel, uh, you know, that we're familiar with. You know, black represents sin and red the blood of Jesus and white is purity and blue stands for faith or trusting God and a lot of times we'll talk about you know Peter stepping out on the water you know blue water trust and how he sank and green growing with Jesus and and then gold streets of gold or yellow you know heaven someday and so you could have a whole theme with colors but have kids wear or maybe spread out over weeks hey this week everybody wear black this week everybody wear red this week everybody wear white and, you know and and acknowledge Knowledge. Hey, who's most today? Who is the most of whatever color your day is? Most blue today or the most creative blue? Or maybe on some of the days it's like wear a hat. And, or you could just do a hat day. That could be a totally outside spirit day, something totally different. Just hat day. And then play games with hats. You know, you can take a hat and put a, a stick coming up out of it and have kids throw a ring. And the other kid has to catch it on his head. Or a hat with a bowl on top and you throw ping pong balls and they try to catch it on their head. And use helmets and maybe talk about, you know, the helmet of sound salvation, um, so, so many things you can do. But kids love wearing hats. Um, and so bring hat day. Give away some hats, some Christian hats, things with scripture on it, things to remind them as they wear that hat what you talked about. Have mystery Sunday. They come and they don't know what they're going to experience. It's a mystery, big question mark. And maybe even do mystery room videos. And so you set it up in advance with some of your parents. Go buy some of the rooms of your older kids while they're in school. Go buy their rooms and kind of film and video. You know, okay, this is Johnny's room. And you're at his door and you open his door. And wow, take a look at the room. And, and maybe it's a mess or maybe, you know, there's clothes hanging from the ceiling fan. Or maybe it's great and clean. Or maybe you want to hide some funny stuff. Now, if you do that, make sure you don't embarrass your kids. Um, you know, you don't want to hide a, you know, bedwetting flyer under his pillow but you know like maybe you're, you're filming along the shelf and you've hidden a Barbie in Johnny's room and you come across and you're like you know oh look there's Johnny's Barbie and of course you want to when you show it to your kids you'll want to say hey Johnny really didn't have a Barbie here's the Barbie and maybe the, the object you hide you use that as part of an illustration for the mystery day that day and so you can do mystery room videos with mystery day have mystery riddles things they have to figure out kind of who done it things or maybe that's how you introduce your Bible story. You give them clues and they have to solve the clues, figure out who who the Bible character is. Where is he found in the Bible? Mystery day. Uh, you could do bicycle day. Tie everything into bicycles and maybe have your kids bring their bicycles to church. And afterwards, you've got a, a course set up and families eat lunch and the kids ride through. Maybe even bring, bring if you're a town has bicycle police bring them in they'll a lot of times they'll give a presentation and of course their presentation won't be religious it won't have anything to do with God or scripture uh, unless you have some police officers that are willing to do that um, but many times afterwards you'll know, give them a hand great job and you take the kids back inside and then you tie it in as far as bringing what they tied in to the truths of scripture and so that's a great thing you can do on bicycle day too you can do pretzel Pickle and Pig Day. And uh, Pretzel, Pickle, and Pig Day have a lot of pretzels. Uh, or you can do Pretzel Pingle, uh, Pingle, <laughs> Pretzel Pringle and Pig Day. Hey, these can be tongue twister days too. By the way, that can be another theme, a day of tongue twisters. And talk about not being twisted up or about watching your words controlling your tongue. But anyway, Pretzel and Pringle and Pig Day, or Pretzel, Pickle and Pig Day, uh, simply tie into the story of uh, the prodigal son. The pig there, you can tie into the pretzel twisted, you know, about things that are wrong. And the pickle and the Pringle can really be a taste test. You know, different kinds of Pringles, different kinds of pickles. You know, what do they like? Talk about choices. So you've got, you've got to make choices. 
And uh, some people make twisted choices, and their choices are wrong, and the wrong choices lead them the wrong way. An incredible truth. If you stay on the right path, you'll end up in the right place. You go the wrong way, you're going to end up in the wrong place. Well, the prodigal son went the wrong way. He ended up in a pig pen. And on this day, you know, sometimes in uh, the toy area with dog toys, they'll sell kind of pig squeakers, you know, and like little pigs that sound like pigs. And so you can give things like that away, and, uh, and it makes for a fun day, but a very meaningful day. You want every day, no matter what you're doing illustration wise to be very meaningful as far as teaching the truths of scripture all right we're going to continue on for a few more minutes here you can do dog day depend on god day and uh, do dog things you can do uh you can do slinky sunday share the story about the guy that created the slinky um, he uh, eventually gave away everything he made from the slinky and he moved to south america as a missionary and, but he held on to the original slinky mold, and the reason he did that was because he, his thought was, if everything falls through here, I, I want to be able to go back and to regain money. And one day God convicted him of that, and standing out by the seashore, he took that mold and he threw it into the sea, and he said, God, I don't want to depend on anything except for you. Now, you want to look up the story, make sure you get all the facts, all the details right, but give away slinkies. Use a slinky as an illustration. Talk about where the slinky came from, this guy that created it. And uh, you could do a frog day and do frog illustrations, frog jumps, leapfrog, sack races, you know, frog, you know, but talk about fully rely on God. Have a frog day. Um, you can do the colors of love, and again, go back to the gospel colors, uh, or rainy, rainy day ruckus, and have rainy day activities. Um, uh, you can do just a plain day. Kids make plain uh, airplanes, uh, paper airplanes, and show them different ways, and talk about the plain truth, or, or talk about not just plain living, all sorts of plain ways you can play, play off that word. Fun in the Sunday. Do things with frisbees, sunglasses. Give sunglasses away. You know, give bubble things away. You know, fun summer activities. Fun in the Sunday. Wacky Wonder Day. And just do wacky experiments or wacky science day, you know, and, and have some wacky activities. Lion Day, you know, and you do lion things and talk about not lying or, you know, Daniel in the lion's den. Dr. Pepper Day. You know, and, and if I remember, there's a story with Dr. Pepper and the creation of Dr. Pepper that you can pull some good illustrations from. And, you know, let kids taste test. Can you tell which one is which? And do soda tasting and tie it into making choices and knowing what's right, not just guessing through life. God told us what to do. He didn't just leave us out there to guess. Um, uh, you can do A day, talk about anger. J day, talk about joy. K day, talk about kindness. You can do happy dirt day and let everybody eat uh, the little pudding dirt with the gummy worms on top and talk about how God created man from the dust of the earth, but God created us for a relationship with him. Creepy Critters Day. You know, what's bugging you? Have kids write down what's bugging them. Answer their questions. And then talk about creepy critters. Here are some things that might try to crawl into your life, but they don't belong. Um, a mystery guest Sunday. We're going to have a mystery guest. Who's it going to be? And maybe four Sundays in a row, a mystery guest comes in. Or maybe a mystery Bible character. Somebody get dressed as a Bible character comes in and kids they try to write down and guess, you know, they're guessing who this Bible character is. You could do Ike night. Now, that doesn't really fit for a Sunday morning. Well, unless you want to do a night. Who says you can't do a night on Sunday morning? Um, why not do Ark in the Dark on a Sunday morning? It's not dark, but why not? Ike night. And do things that rhyme with Ike. You know, fight night, uh, light night, uh, bite night, uh, fright night. All sorts of things you can tie into doing Ike night. You can do the Cheesy Olympics. I love this one. Um, we do it every year with our older students. The Cheesy Olympics, um, uh, you have a variety of cheese games. You've got the cheese slice sling. You've got, sometimes we'll shoot cheese with a slingshot. We'll do cheese duels. You know, 10 paces, turn and throw your cheese chunk. Cheese sculptures. Um, squeeze cheese drop. One kid puts on a, a shower cap and a uh, puts on goggles and a trash bag. I mean, they're totally covered. They lay down on a paint sheet. And another kid gets on a chair with squeeze cheese. And the one kid on the bottom laying down opens his mouth. And the other kid is target practice. You know, from nose level, squeezes the cheese it comes down, they're trying to catch as much in their mouth as they can. And of course, tell them, you know, we don't want you to choke, spit it out, or swallow it, close your mouth if you need to, you know, but it's about having a target. What are you shooting for? What are you aiming for? What's your goal in life? Hey, Paul's go Philippians chapter 3. He tells us what it is. And so all sorts of things you can do with the cheesy Olympics. 
you know, you could do battle for the buns and use hot dog buns and hamburger buns and maybe even, you know, have that as a snack, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers, but, uh, you know, battle for the buns and activities with them and then draw out of those activities different lessons that teach. Uh, so all sorts of activities. This has just been a list of things that you can do, just some ideas to stir your imagination. Uh, you could do Pirate and Princess Day. You can do um, slime times, where every week there's a different activity and it's going to slime somebody. And, uh, and maybe you do prime time. Hey, it's the best time to follow Jesus. And in the middle of prime time, you have a slime time. So all that to say, these are just ideas. Take them, run with them. Use these to boost and energize what you're already doing. But in the middle of it, never forget to teach God's Word. Thank you.